Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dave Faircon. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Northeastern University. And it's my pleasure today to welcome you officially to our campus. We're very glad that you took some time this afternoon to come visit us and to learn a little bit more about Northeastern. I also know it is a beautiful day outside, so we'll try not to eat too much of your time here inside downstairs, but we'll get you out on your campus for after the things. I will not be alone today while we talk about Northeastern. I'm joined by one of our wonderful current Huskies, and I'll let you introduce yourself now. Of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Zach Beeler. I'm a rising fourth year student here. Uh, I see him pronouns. I'm originally from Indiana and decided to move out to Boston for school. Um, I am a combined major about accounting and data science, which I'm sure you'll hear all about. Um, if anyone can't hear me, let me know. Um, I'll talk a little bit louder. I have a mic back there I can use. Um, yeah, today I'm just going to kind of share some of my experiences here, um, just give you some insights from a student um, rather than the um, faculty side things, just to give you um, as much information as you need to make an informed decision. Excellent. And as we get started, we know that you're probably visiting many colleges, and perhaps this is one of the first that you've come to visit. But for everybody here, there's a reason that you've chosen to visit Northeastern. Obviously, I'm very happy about that, but you've probably heard something about what Northeastern does that kind of intrigued you and wanted to learn a little bit more about it. Um, for us, we truly believe the thing that we do differently than most universities in the U.S. right now is we allow our students to gain real-world experience. And so no matter what program you're in at Northeastern, no matter where you go while you're with us, you will be encouraged to gain real-world experience, either working full-time, traveling around the world, possibly doing research on our campus. And this will really set you apart as a student. As you think about college in the U.S., typically you go to school for eight semesters, four years, you get your degree, you leave. Maybe you fit in an internship over the summer, maybe you have some time during the school year to do that. Here at Northeastern, we want students to know it's okay to take time and be flexible, to change your major a few times, to go out and work full time for companies and organizations, possibly to travel abroad, not just once, but maybe two or three times over the course of your time as a student. And we want you to know that this is something that students come to Northeastern to do gain real world experience and to really set themselves apart after graduation for that next step, which is the rest of your life, no pressure. So as we talk, this will be sort of our guiding force that you will gain experience as a student here at Northeastern. In order to detail this, we'll talk about three very different but important pieces of the student experience here at Northeastern. We're gonna talk about the academic experience here at Northeastern, what it's like to be in the classroom. This being one of the biggest classrooms at Northeastern, so it only gets smaller from here. We'll talk about the experience that we just touched on, and we'll also talk about their personal lives, what it's like to just be a student here at Northeastern and in the city of Boston. Afterwards, we'll talk about the admissions and financial aid process, and then head out on a campus tour. All in all, we'll spend about a half hour here in the room, and then an hour out on your campus tour. Sound good? I don't know how else we would spend our time. Appreciate the nods of approval as well. Before we get started, I always like to check and see sort of who's in the room with us. Um, and so is this anybody's first campus tour? If you've never visited a college before, don't be shy. We're all pros. Excellent. If you didn't raise your hand, it's okay. You'll just be a little lost. For those of you that are here with us, how many of you are applying to college this fall? If you're a fourth year student, maybe a senior, excellent. Congratulations, truly. If you're in this room and you're applying to college this fall, it means likely you're going to college next year. So congratulations, that is an achievement in itself. Hopefully it's Northeastern. Obviously that's why we give you all this information, but truly we want you to know that, especially in that admissions and financial aid piece, that we're here to support you and help you kind of make that decision. So whether this is your first, or you've been on many tours, maybe even three today, we want you to know that hopefully this information sticks and it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable about going to college by the time you're done. Okay, that's my piece, let's get started. So, to begin, who is Northeastern? We've got 18,000 undergraduates here in the city of Boston, and these undergraduates are split up amongst our seven colleges in our Explore program. Our seven colleges are designed to allow students to have a smaller, more personal academic experience. Example of these are our Corey College of Computer Sciences, or our College of Social Sciences and Humanities. Northeastern is a great diverse student body. They're interested in things like the STEM field, like computer science, but you'll also find students here for journalism, communications, accounting. They really run the wide variety of areas of study. Now we do have in these seven different colleges, many majors. There are 300 majors here at Northeastern, and 170 of those majors are what we call combined majors. These combined majors are designed for students that want to learn at the intersection of two fields of study. So maybe you're in the room and you've always wanted to study nursing and that's been your goal forever. That's great, you'll have a home here at Northeastern. 
but we also have these combined majors for the students that really want to learn between disciplines. As a student at Northeastern, you're able to choose classes that will be in your core studies. For example, we have a computer science and philosophy combined uh, major here at Northeastern. You'll learn about computer science, you'll also learn about philosophy, but those students take it a little bit more specific in their combined major and learn about the ethics of artificial intelligence, what it means to be human as technology advances, and they're talking about those things in a shared classroom with students with a similar background. There's over 170 as I mentioned, so in those black husky handbooks that we've given you on the way in, feel free to grab one on the way out if you didn't get it, that has a full list of these combined majors. Now if you're not sure what you'd like to study, we do have the Explore program. This allows up to two years to decide on a final course study here at Northeastern. You can take classes across the different colleges and then finally land in a program that you'd like to be in. Now our cross campus will be in small classes. We have a 14 to 1 student faculty ratio and the students in the classroom are learning from industry experts. So no matter where you are on campus, you're going to develop a relationship with the professors. You'll also be supported academically. You'll have academic advisors. We also offer extensive academic support through things like peer tutoring and subject tutoring, and also just time after classroom to talk to your professors either in their office hours or right here at the front of the classroom. Now obviously, I'm not spending much time in the classroom, but Zach, you have. Can you tell us a little bit about your academic experience? Of course. So like I mentioned, I'm a combined major in accounting and data science. Um, definitely not what I started out as, though. Um, I've actually changed my major four times, so very flexible. You know, maybe probably too well for my prescribed office, but yeah, so if you're not sure which one to do, you either come in undeclared or come in as a certain major and you realize like, hey, maybe this isn't the path for me. You definitely have options to switch between our schools to switch between our different programs. But yeah, so I ended up in this program of accounting and data science, so I'm doing a lot of work, um, obviously, with accounting and data science, but also looking at that intersection. Um, so a lot of that centers around, you know, automation of accounting processes, using data to kind of predict fraud, um, stuff like that, just super exhilarating, I know. Um, but yeah, so a lot of really cool problems, or yeah, problems I get to deal with. Um, another really cool thing about Northeastern in terms of flexibility is with these new path classes we see up here. Um, so as opposed to tr a traditional university where you're taking your general education requirements, such as, you know, one biology class, one, you know, calculus class, one physics class, um, instead here we encourage our students to do these competency-based. So this is where you're essentially taking classes to fulfill certain disciplines. Uh, this could look, look like a bunch of different things. We have expressive diversity, quantitative reasoning, logical analysis. Um, for me, instead of taking, um, you know, say like a statistics class, which would have fulfilled my quantitative analysis requirement, I instead took intro to board game development. Um, I really don't like statistics. I really like board games. So it just kind of seems like an easy fit for me. Um, kind of the whole class was centered around doing a board game. At the end of the semester, we um, like kind of competed to see who objectively had the best one. I was not even close, um, but it was still like a really fun experience. It's a really cool way for me to knock out my education requirements um, without actually having to you know, stick with that specific hard science part of that. Um, we offer these across all our schools, so instead of like, you know, you have these three classes that you can take instead, now you have 80 classes. Um, just to make sure that what you're taking is representative of what you're interested in, that way you can apply it after you graduate um, in whatever field you end up. And so you can be flexible here. We want you to change your major. We want you, if you're certain about what it is, to stick with it for all four years. We also, for any of you that are very driven and maybe want to get your master's degree as well, we do have a plus one for every master's program. So if you're seriously interested in, for instance, public health and you wanted to stay on for five years and get that public health degree, you could get both your bachelor's and your master's with us at Northeastern. If that's your goal, no pressure. We've got 80 different master's programs that you can participate in, starting in your undergrad experience. Now, outside the classroom, as I mentioned at the beginning, is really where the magic happens, in my opinion, at Northeastern. We have students studying around the world from global experiences. We have a co-op program that allows students to work full time. We have research that happens both on and off our campus that Northeastern sponsors. And we also have a service learning program through our academics. We're going to talk about each four of these in depth, but to start, we'll talk about the global experience. And so Northeastern is an incredibly global university. There are probably families in the room here that have traveled from around the world to come visit us, and if so, I'm very glad that you made the trip to come and see us. We also have campuses around the world. Northeastern has a campus in London, England. We have another campus on the West Coast in Oakland, California. We're the only college in the US with campuses on both coasts that include residential housing and a life. So it's an incredible opportunity to travel around the world and still have that Northeastern Husky flag above your head as you go. We do allow students to study abroad as early as their first year. So being an incredibly international university, we, do, we don't want to hold you back if studying abroad has been your goal. We do this through the NUN program. The NUN program is a first semester, first year study abroad experience. 
It allows students to start their very first day as a Husky somewhere around the world. Now, obviously being a first year college student is a new experience, it's a stressful one in many ways. And so if you do have on-site support and staff on that site as well, we work with partners all around the world. This semester, next semester, we'll have students in places like Dublin, Ireland, in Thessaloniki, Greece, and Rome, Italy, studying together usually about two to 300 students at each site. In the spring, they come back and join us in Boston, and they spend the rest of their time either studying abroad or with us here in the city as well. We also have a one-year program version of this for those that are really driven called the Global Scholars Program. And again, this is just a way for you to, from the very first day, experience what it's like to study around the world. Now, Zach actually got a start in the NUM program. Could you tell us a little bit about how that worked? Of course. Um, so, I spent my very first semester at Northeastern abroad. Um, I'm very well aware of the fact that that is not the traditional start to the college experience. Um, full transparency, when I first got that admissions email, I was like, you're going abroad. I was a little skeptical. Um, I wasn't exactly sure, but Northeastern was my top choice. I decided, no, at worst, it'll be one semester. I'll just take it out. Um, to be completely honest, it's probably like the best decision I've ever made. Um, it was a really, really incredible experience. I spent my first semester in Rome, Italy, which is like such a beautiful place to be. Um, and also, just in terms of independence and growth, I grew so much during that time. Um, it was a really good way to kind of get me up on my own two feet. I always kind of figured, like, if I can live by myself in Italy for a couple months, I'm probably going to be fine in Boston. Um, it very much was the case. Hopefully, we can come back here. Um, but it's a really, really cool experience. I always tell people, like, keep an open mind about it. Like I said, it's not, I know it's not everyone's first choice. Um, I was personally really worried about coming back to Boston. You know, all of my friends are going to school normally. I'm going abroad. What would that look like? Um, but because we're such a semester-based school, everything we do in the fall, we do in the spring as well. So that means orientations, involvement fairs, even like drop-in hours with your academic advisors. You'll have all of the same resources just one semester later. And like Dave said, it is a pretty substantial part of our freshman class. About a third of our um, incoming students will be placed in this engineering program. Um, so I was with a cohort of about 130 other students and about five Northeastern faculty members. Um, just to make sure that I did have a support network while I was out there, um, that I continued to be able to take advantage of while I'm here. I'm actually, I still live with my roommates that I met in Italy, which is really cool. So yeah, keep an open mind about it. You know, obviously people go abroad in different ways, but this is a really amazing experience if you do have that opportunity. And at one point, the president of Northeastern had a very lofty goal that 100% of our students would study outside the U.S. while they're students with us. Uh, we've had some global interruptions through a wrench into that plan, but we're back on track with sending students all around the world every single day here at Northeastern. One of the ways we do that is our global co-op program. And so to talk about that, we'll talk about the co-op in depth. So the co-op, I mentioned a few times already, it really is one of the things that Northeastern was doing best from day one. So we were founded in 1898. At the time, we were a night school for apprenticeships in engineering through the YMCA. And slowly, this has converted into having students work full time, wherever it is that they're interested in going. So as a student, as a college student, you will have the professional capabilities to be valued as a full time team member. We want you to experience this now while you're still in your undergrad. So we partner with 3,000 different co-op employers that come to Northeastern and say, we really love one of your students to work for us, and you're hired onto their team as a full time staff member. Our co-op students do not have to take class during this co-op experience, so you don't pay for tuition, you're not worried about homework or classwork, you're really just focused on that Monday through Friday, that 30 to 40 hours a week of being a professional. This allows you to find your professional fit, and this is the best part about the co-op. It's not getting paid to work full time, it's not having no classes, it's to really understand what it is you're looking for after graduation before it happens. And this allows our students to gain six months to a year of full-time work experience before you even have your degree. The co-ops usually run from January to June or June to December. This allows you to miss usually a semester and a half of um, student time to really focus on that professional life. Example, as Zach said, we have a very flexible curriculum here at Northeastern. So today, you're in our summer two term. You'll see it's still a busy campus. There's still students all around, many of them either just coming back from or starting their next co-op for the second half of the year. This is really the thing that sets Northeastern students up. Being able to study and work while you're still in college is something that not many colleges allow their students to do. Here, you're heavily encouraged to do so. Over 90% of our students will find a co-op employer and work with them. So this really allows you to gain that experience of what is it I'm gonna do next? Do I like my field? Or do I wanna stick with it after graduation? And to have that knowledge at 19 or 20 years old is really an incredible time job. Now, Zach has done a co-op. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So I've actually done two co-ops, so I did my first one last spring. I was doing tax accounting with Eric Sue Young. Um, that was a really incredible experience. It's like a great you know, introduction to the professional world. Um, I never really worked with 
applied to some studies before, it also just kind of acclimated me to like the caliber of work that was expected from me after I graduated. Uh, but it did help me realize that public accounting is just not really the path I want to go. I can see that's pretty common with a lot of students after their first co-op, they may realize like, hey, let's readjust a little bit. Um, I always kind of tell people that co-op is kind of like dating, you know, you have to figure out what you don't like, you figure out what you do like. Uh, but so after my first co-op was done, I sat down with one of our technical advisors, and we tweaked the classes I was taking just to better represent what I was actually interested in. Uh, from there, I accepted my second co-op, um, doing risk and financial advisory consulting with Deloitte. Um, I absolutely love that one, it was a really great experience. Um, my coworkers were amazing, the work was really enjoyable, um, it gave me a lot to do for me, which I think is a big plus. Um, but they actually gave me a full-time offer to come work for them out in California once I graduate, um, which I accepted and I'm really excited about. And just kind of like my parents changed them to, I'm done with my senior year, which is not where they lined up. Um, but I think it's just kind of like a testament to how well those internships set, set you up for success. You know, by the time you graduate, you'll already have 12 to 18 months of professional experience, which is such a huge benefit, you know, when you're going into that job search. Um, with that said, they're not just kind of like shoving you in blind. I was a lifeguard back in high school, so I truly had no professional experience. Um, but the semester before you go on co-op, you will be placed in a co-op prep course. This is going to teach you everything from how to apply, what the resume should look like, even like what you should wear to an interview. Um, during this class, you'll also be given a specific co-op advisor. This is going to be an industry expert who worked in the field for several years, has come to Northeastern, and is now helping students um, you know, help you know, get these co-ops and what the process should look like for them. Um, you're also given a um, sorry, your mentors. This could be usually a fourth or fifth year student who's been through the process a couple times. Their role is to give you insights and perspectives from a student that you might not get from a faculty member. Um, just make sure that you know that you are you know, putting your best foot forward and getting the most out of your co op experience. But one of the other ways that we allow our students to gain experience outside the classroom is through research. And so many of this does happen here on campus at Northeastern. We are a Pernetti R1 global research powerhouse. This is a rating given to us based off of the amount and funding that offers the research here on campus. One of the buildings that you'll go into on your campus tour is the ISIC building. The Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex is one of our newest buildings on campus. Um, we like it so much, we're actually building a new one right next door, so you'll see that as well. And this building allows our students to take part in use-inspired research. So as a student at Northeastern, you'll be able to take part in research as early as your first year. But this is not just for students in the STEM field. Uh, any of you are interested in things like the medical field or maybe going on to the field of engineering, oftentimes you'll hear you need some sort of research on your resume in order to get into those programs. While that is true, we also want our students to know that the level of research you can do in your undergrad here at Northeastern will change the field in which you work. It's use inspired, there are things that affect our daily lives like cybersecurity, healthcare, sustainability research. And you're also allowed to do allowed to do no matter what program you're in. An example of this is we have theater arts students on our campus that are actually participating in research through this ISEC building. If anybody in here is interested in theater arts, you're able to come and study acting and set design, all the wonderful things that come with drama. But these students were approached by computer science artificial intelligence researchers, and they wanted to pitch an interdisciplinary research project discussing how to better inform the way artificial intelligence acts. And who better to do that than the drama students that are every day acting and performing on stage. And so now they're working together and actually going to publish a research study on how to better refine the way that AI acts and possibly allow it to perform more human tasks. So it's a great opportunity as a student that was possibly just thinking about the world of fine arts to also have some novel computer science research on your resume for the rest of your life and be a co-author in a research study. We really want you to think about the ways that you can kind of combine your interests and develop them outside the classroom and research is really a great way to set yourself apart from other students graduating before that. And the last piece is our service learning component. Now, at Northeastern, there are plenty of community service-minded clubs. We live here in the city of Boston. Hopefully, wherever you're coming from, you've learned to care about your local community and to give back to them. We have as well. Now, the service learning component allows you to do this during your class time. So not only doing it outside of the class hours, but through service learning class sections, we allow our students to take their syllabus and apply it to the real world. We have about 100 different service learning classes that students can choose to take at Northeastern. These are new path classes that every student has access to. Oftentimes, they're also within your major. An example of this is we have a business class here, mergers and acquisitions, a great part of being a business student. Now, the service learning component of that class, if you choose to select it, might actually allow two different nonprofit organizations in the city of Boston that need a merger acquisitions expert to have those students come in and be that consultant. 
We actually had one of these sections work with two different religious organizations in Boston through 2020. One of them was failing and couldn't keep their finances, and they actually facilitated the merger between these two churches in the city of Boston. This allows you to really make an impact in the community here that you live in. And for the rest of your time, as you come back to the city of Boston, this really allows our students to see the actual impact that they've made in this town, in the city, it's a big city. This also allows you, if you're really interested in nonprofit work or community-based organization, to gain leadership through this program. You can also become a service learning team leader, and through the program, become the student that really facilitates the relationship between professors and the local community. So if you're interested in growing through this program or working in the field of nonprofits, this is a great way to get ahead now. Now, this is a lot of hard work. We've talked a lot about the um, busy things that our students are doing while they're here at Northeastern. Next, we're going to talk just about what it's like to be a student. So as a student here at Northeastern, most likely you're going to meet people from all around the world. We mentioned earlier that we're the Huskies, so no matter what corner of the globe you come from, you'll join us here in that. We have students from over 100 different countries. We have students from all 50 states here at Northeastern. So I promise you, wherever you're visiting us from, we've had a student come to our campus and succeed from that place. We also have students in the first year class alone who speak over 60 languages. So as you walk around campus, you'll really get to develop that sense of how big the community is. Now, in order to foster a better community, we do have cultural resource centers on our campus. We have 11 of these throughout Northeastern. As you stop at the Curry Student Center, there's actually three right in that one building. Through this wall is the John D. O'Brien African American Institute at Northeastern. And these are options for students to take part in resources and programming from students, faculty, and staff with similar backgrounds. So no matter where you're coming from, maybe your local community had a lot of cultural events, these cultural centers bring that to our campus here so you can continue that engagement. Now we also are the number two leading institution for international students. So if you're interested in being at a community where you'll meet friends from all around the world and meet them here in campus, maybe possibly living with them, this is the second best place by the numbers in the country to do that. You may also find your home through our student organizations. So we have about 500 student organizations on our campus. These are a very wide variety of organizations from professional orgs to just purely social outings. We are also a Division I NCAA athletics institution. We have 19 D1 teams that compete at the highest US national level. We also have club, esports, and intramural sports as well. So if you're not a Division I athlete, don't worry, most of us aren't. You're still able to take part in that student life here on campus. And the campus culture at Northeastern is really one of student pride. If you're not already a hockey, crew, or basketball fan, you will find yourself in the student section at the Matthews Arena at some point in your time here at Northeastern. And it really gives you a campus that you can root for and really fall in love with. Now, Zach, as a student living here every day, can you tell us a little bit about student life? Of course. Um, so I personally think it's, it's really important to get involved. I think it'd be kind of hard pressed to find any student here that isn't involved in at least one club or organization. Uh, personally speaking, I'm involved in Husky Ambassador, so our program group here. Um, I'm also part of the Northeastern Recreational Climbing Club. I figured I needed like some kind of physical activity in my life, and a bunch of my friends joined. Um, so that's been a really fun experience. I'm really heavily involved also in Delta Sigma Pi, which is a professional co-ed business fraternity. Um, definitely not something I envisioned myself joining when I came here, but I went to one of their call-out meetings and I absolutely fell in love. Um, and so that's kind of where I've ended up finding my community. That's where a lot of my like, really good friends are from. I'm currently with the VP of that, so I do a lot of work with outreach and recruitment. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of stuff to keep you busy. Like I said, really important to get involved. Um, with over 500 clubs, like I promise there's something for you, Like even if you're not sure what that may be. Um, we always have involvement fairs. Um, we have an entire website dedicated to all of our organizations. Um, so whatever that, whatever that may look like for you, chances are we have it. Um, if not, also super easy to start your own um, if that's something you think you may be interested in. But yeah, tons and tons of options. Chances are you'll find something that you're interested in. And with all this going on, we want you to be somewhere nearby campus. And so for your first two years, you'll be required to live in university housing here in Boston. Obviously, if you're studying abroad, if you're on a co-op or anything like that, we're not gonna hold you back, go out and do your thing, but you are required otherwise to be on campus for two years. Now your third and your fourth year, it's very common for students to live off campus around the city of Boston. And oftentimes it's more convenient for our students to maybe live nearby. Their co-op place would be Cambridge. It's still an easy two ride to get here to campus, but allows you that flexibility in those last few years. Your first year, you will live in a living learning community. This is a passion-based housing option that you select on your way into Northeastern. Examples of these is we have a women's and engineering uh, residence hall that allows students from a more professional standpoint to meet students in their program. We also have the Foodies LLC, which is a floor of students that goes around the city of Boston and samples some of the local cuisine that we eat. 
So whatever you're interested in, you have that option to still have a home away from home at your residence hall that works for you. We also, as we mentioned a few times, live in the city of Boston. And so being able to live in the heart of this city is one of the best parts of being a student here on our campus. We have a secluded, kind of contained campus, but it's walkable. You're able to get downtown to four on-campus ski stops. You'll see some of them on your tour. We are also so near to some of the best institutions in Boston. This is one of the best college towns in America. There's over 300,000 college students here. You're going to meet so many students, not just at Northeastern, but at some of our partner organizations, some colleges right in our neighborhood that are gonna have similar paths to you and on the same sort of trajectory to their, to their degree. The local businesses, the local institutions know this as well. So there's plenty of student discounts, student nights, and other things that you'll be able to access as a student. Zach, as a Midwest transplant, tell us a little bit about how Boston is doing so well. Yeah, so I think Boston is one of the best, if not the best cities in the US to be a college student in. Um, there's a super fun stat that September 1st, um, when all the college student dates are, um, the average age of Boston actually drops by 10. Um, so you are, by no means alone, we have a ton of other college students here with you. Um, with that comes a lot of really big benefits. Um, so a couple of my favorites, um, if anyone is a baseball fan, uh, Fenway Stadium offers what's called student nine. So the day of the game, um, if they have any extra seats, they'll send a text out to all the students to be like, hey, we're selling these tickets for nine dollars, buy now. Um, I actually got a text earlier today, so I was just going, and it's there, it's you. Um, yeah, so this is super cool, like really spontaneous and fun to go to. Um, we also have a ton of really great museums in the area. Um, so the Museum of Fine Arts, which is directly across the street from us, um, all Northeastern students get in for free for that, which is really great. Um, I'm personally a really big fan of the ICA, or the Institute of Contemporary Art. Um, that's over in Seaport. They let us in free every Thursday as well, so I try and go check that out at least once a month to see if I feel like getting in service. Um, but outside of that, I mean, Boston's like a beautiful city. Like, um, the commons are really beautiful. If anyone's walking over at Esplanade, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I will say, my favorite thing to go to soup is anyone from Boston here who's in the Well, it's so close it's essentially just a hockey, annual hockey competition between Northeastern, BU, UC, and Harvard. As you can imagine, it gets very intense, so students do get really into it. Um, I used to be able to say Northeastern won't pass through it, so we do unfortunately be able to say that's okay. Half of our starting lineup is at the Olympics, you decide which is more important. Um, but no, so a really cool thing, our student body gets really involved. Um, like I said, there's a ton of students here. I've been here for three years now, and I still don't know how of things to do. Um, I can't imagine us being here since. So hopefully this is showing you a little bit about why students are here at Northeastern. We're going to take the next few minutes to talk about sort of the how students become students here at Northeastern. We will bid farewell to Zach as he goes to get some of our Husky ambassadors for the tour. Thank you for your time. So as students, many of you said you get your flying to college this fall. So I know this is top of mind. I also want to detail that this is specific to every student. So you and your family probably have questions different from everybody else in the room. Please come see us afterwards, ask your tour guides, and come back and ask one of the admissions counselors. We'll be happy to sort of express in detail the nuances between you. So as a student applying Northeastern, we do ask that every student applies. We require a common application or the collision application. Whichever one your school uses, that's the one we want to see. We have no preference. Northeastern got 90,000 applications last year. That is a huge number. It's the most of any nonprofit in New England. We still look at our students holistically. And so for every single student that applies, we have no minimum requirements, no minimum SAT. We're actually test optional all the way through until 2026. What we're looking for in our students is academic rigor in the context of your high school. Not every high school has access to more enrollment or AP classes. So we're really just looking at have you taken the best of what your school offers to you. We also look at what students are doing in their free time, outside the classroom, in their community, or possibly, again, in your family. Maybe you have to take care of your siblings every evening. Show us that on your application. We want to see students that are academically engaged and spending their time however it is important to you. Again, we are test optional. No need to send the essay through the ACT if you do not want to. But you will, as a student, need to meet the deadlines. And so we have two deadlines here at Northeastern, November 1st and January 1st. We have early decision, which is a binding agreement. So if you're serious about Northeastern, it's your top choice for college, you can apply to the early decision plan, basically saying, I will attend in the fall. You can only do that to one college in the US, and for us, we actually offer early financial aid reads, because we understand committing to a school in November is very stressful and hard, so you can still apply early decision and get your financial aid back early for that process. 
If you're not certain about your top choice school, by all means, apply to a non-binding program. That's why they're on the same deadlines for November 1st and January 1st. Now, when you do get your decision, it'll look something like this. And we have many different programs at Northeastern. We've mentioned some of them here. These really allow us to enroll as many students as possible. With 90,000 applicants, there's a lot of different ways that we can house them, whether it be here in Boston, at one of our global campuses around the world, maybe through that NUN program. And so if you get a decision like Zach mentioned, maybe the NUN program, you're not sure what it means or where it puts you, reach out to Northeastern, and we're happy to kind of explain what that spot looks like for you. Now, after you are admitted, you still need to figure out the harder piece, in my opinion, which is financial aid. Luckily, Northeastern does make financial aid a little bit easier, we do meet 100% of our students' demonstrated financial need. In order to do this, you have to apply for need-based financial aid. We take the FAFSA and the CSS profile, and this is for all U.S. citizens and permanent residents. So we'll consider your financial uh, picture, and we will offer you all the financial aid that we think your family needs. If that's not correct, you can always come back and talk to us. We also look at every single student for merit-based scholarships. These are truly merit-based. They are not just awards because we want certain students to come to Northeastern. They are based off of incredibly competitive academics. About 10 to 15% of our applicants will receive a merit-based scholarship. So if you don't receive one in the fall, don't worry, it's okay, it's not common. But this really is a way for us to award our top students as they apply to Northeastern. If you do qualify for the need-based financial aid, you'll also be covered under what's called the Northeastern Promise. Really, this is our promise to you as a student that you will not have to worry about how to afford your college education after your first semester. Your financial aid will stay the same or get better every single year that you're with us at Northeastern. So it usually takes about eight semesters to um, finish your degree and get that, get that bachelor's, and we will keep your financial aid the same or better all eight semesters. If we increase our tuition at any time, maybe a couple percentage points for all sorts of reasons, your financial aid will also increase with that tuition. So this is really just our opportunity to say to you that you do not have to every single semester call student financial services and see what your bill is gonna be like, it will stay the same or get better every year. But even if this doesn't apply to you, if you don't qualify for need-based financial aid, hopefully you've seen why our students are here at work. They're getting ready for that next step, which is like, I know it's scary to think about, but all of them have that next step figured out. Zach is not an exception when he mentioned that he has that job after graduation. 53% of the students that do a co-op at Northeastern are graduating with a full-time job offer from that co-op employer. You've been hired once, you've proven yourself, you're capable of the work, and oftentimes they want you to come back. They don't want to lose you after graduation. So as you're on your campus floor meeting your Husky ambassadors, ask them questions. What is that next step? What does it look like for you to get there? How many times have you changed your mind? Hopefully this will help you a little bit as you kind of consider attending Northeastern in the future. We thank you for your patience and your time. It's been about a half hour, so as promised, it's time for the campus floor. So feel free, as, you, as I said, ask questions of your Husky ambassadors. Come and see an admissions counselor afterwards if you need anything. I'm going to dismiss the room now, starting from the front row. I appreciate you sitting up front. And we're going to head to the back of the room where Zach and our Husky ambassadors will split you up for a tour. Feel free to dismiss now. And when you see the row in front of you finish, get up and follow them down. All right, I'm going to catch you guys up so we get some even groups. I'm going to try. We are now sitting in West Village G. Just across the path is West Village Beach. You might have seen they're very subtly marketing that it's home of the Cory College of Computer Sciences. It's like branded outside of the mall. Um, but home building just means that that is where they're academic and co-op advising offices are, as well as certain spaces for the students to study. And I'll be pointing out the other like, home buildings to the other colleges along the rest of the park. So while we are in a pretty average slash mid-sized classroom, great time for me to talk a little, about, a little bit about academics. So our average class size is 24, so this is, like I said, mid-sized, a little larger than your typical classroom. And um, we do have those larger lecture halls for your introductory level classes. Um, and then you'll kind of narrow down as you get deeper and deeper into your major. Like I mentioned, I'm, I am in the Environmental Science and American Sign Language departments, which are not the largest here, so I've had very comfortable classes of like 10 to 30 or so people, but I have had the odd, you know, 300 person organic chemistry lecture, which is hard, not because of the size, but because I'm really, really terrible at chemistry. Um, and then all the way on the other side of the spectrum, I've had a class that was three people and a professor on Zoom, which I also, couldn't exactly recommend to you. It was so awkward. Um, but for the most part, it's been a very happy, comfortable size where I get to really get to know my classmates um, and have my professors start to get to know me. So speaking of professors, all of our classes are taught by professors. Never gonna have a class that's taught by a TA or a grad student. Um, and for me, one of my favorite professors I had for um, 
intro to evolution. And the cool thing is, so his name is Bill Dietrich, and throughout the class, he was peppering in his knowledge from his research, research which he does on Antarctic ice fish and their antifreeze blood proteins. <laughs> so throughout this whole environment, or not environmental, evolution class, he was talking about all the different um, things that he's doing in his lab and showing us videos from his Antarctican expeditions and stuff. He actually has an island named after him in Antarctica, so that's really cool. Um, and I think he used to take students to go on co-op with him. But if you're trying to get to Antarctica, you may have to find your own way because I think he's retiring soon. So fun, quirky old guy. Um, just had such a great time in this class. So with regard to classes at Northeastern, they talked a little bit about our new path or NU path curriculum in the info session. And to backtrack a little, I actually started out in the Explore program for undeclared students. So usually people come in here with a major in mind. Personally, I just did not know what I wanted to study. So I chose to be undeclared. I took some environmental science classes, took some bio classes, took linguistics, realized I did not like that, took geology, found the rocks just really boring. Kind of stumbled my way into an environmental science major and I had a lot of help from my advisor along the way. So um, definitely could not have made it through without her. And then um, some of those new path classes that I took to fulfill the requirements outside of major, my major, uh, those are you know things like uh, creative expression, differences in diversity, ethical reasoning, the non-STEMI ones that weren't gonna be covered by my environmental science classes. So one of my favorite ones that I took to complete a new path requirement was called food ethics. Um, I, could, I did it for my ethical reasoning requirement and it was basically a class looking at like the industrial animal agriculture system, global hunger, all those things through a philosophical lens. I'd never taken a philosophy class before so it was totally outside of my wheelhouse. If you ever get the chance to take a philosophy class like in high school or otherwise, highly recommend. It changed my life, totally lost faith in humanity. It's okay. Um, it was really cool. So it was, again, something that I was totally had no experience with before and I definitely would have done a lot. So one of, one of those attributes that we do have to complete in, as part of our new path requirements is called integration of experiences. And that is where those four pillars of experiential learning come in, co-op research service learning and global experience, which I'll talk about throughout the rest of our tour. But since co-op is so kind of integrated into our academic little system, it makes sense for me to talk about it a little bit while we're here. So y'all are pros. I won't give you the full thing. You all just heard them talk about it for who knows how long. But for me, I'll share my experiences. I did my first co-op the spring of my third year. This is the earliest you can do one is the spring of your second year. So you know, you get a few semesters to get the campus and like college life under foot. And then um, you'll take, it, it's very much like a real life job search process, which can be a little scary, very daunting to think about those things in your second year of college, but there's a lot of safety nets that I handled along the way. We have those co-op advisors, um, Northeastern is working with companies to have these positions for us, etc. And also everybody else is doing it around you, which feels like there's a lot of support in that way where you can just go to other people and they'll understand what you're going through. But in any case, you're not technically required to do a co-op, it's just that so many people do one that it is really built into our system. So I did my first one at the New England Aquarium. Has anybody been? Yeah, awesome. So I spent six months working with the penguins, um, doing animal care, basically trainings, treatments, feedings, so much penguin poop cleaning, you have no idea. Um, I'd always loved animals and animal behavior, learning about that stuff. So I really wanted to try my hand at animal care. Turns out I do love those things. I learned a lot about them. I also learned a lot about how the best way to clean penguin poop was, which is not my favorite thing in the world. Um, but that's kind of also the beauty of the co-op program is I can learn all these wonderful things from my managers and also figure out that maybe it's something that I don't want to do. Because imagine, like a couple years down the road, I graduated, I've never done animal care before, and I'm like, I'm in a full set, I'm gonna do this job, it's gonna be great. And then I get there, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> Get it? Okay, sorry, I'm workshopping the delivery of that line. Thanks for your feedback. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, that was my first experience. So I wanted to kind of do a bit of a 180 for my second one. And I did my second co-op. I actually just finished it a few weeks ago. I was doing it January through June, um, plus an extra week. And since we need to do one semester of classes, at least between co-ops, since you can't just co-op forever. Um, but yeah, I did my last co-op at Boston Beer Company, doing sensory research and development, basically running and analyzing taste tests to help develop new products and run trials on existing products. Super different, as you can imagine. A lot more lab-based, a lot more data analysis work, which is also stuff that I hadn't really experienced. And the biggest difference for me between the two, aside from penguin poop cleaning, 
was honestly working in a corporate environment since I had never done that before either. And just kind of getting a feel for what that is like um, was really cool. And getting to work, like I mentioned, I took that food ethics class. I've always been really interested in the food system. Um, and getting to work for like a really big Boston-based beverage company, really cool. I also learned a lot about craft beer, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, so a couple other logistical things about co-op that I always um, get some questions on, but I'll figure how to answer them beforehand, is yes, you can graduate in four years and do two co-ops. People usually do, on average, two co-ops. Some people do less, some people do more. Again, you don't even have to do one. Um, if you choose to do three, you'll usually get pushed like four and a half or five years just based on like literal time constraints. But um, we do have a lot of summer classes that are offered. So you'll notice that campus is very lively during the summer since you might have people doing fall of January through June, doing classes in July and August and taking classes again in the fall. And we also kind of, I like to think that since it's so built into our system, a lot of programs could probably be finished in like three and a half years, giving you that extra time to do co-op, um, even if you didn't do any summer classes. Yeah, the last question that I always get, because I always forget to answer it, is um, yes, you can also live on campus while you're in co-op. Just because you're working does not mean that you have to immediately get booted off of campus. Um, you can totally still live on or off campus wherever you are as long as you're accepted. And we also have co-ops all over Boston, the country. I'm sure you can find them in Monroe, Montana, um, in addition to like the more concentrated areas like New York City and California and stuff. And then we also have them all over the world, like that one in, Antar in Antarctica, as I was mentioning. Any questions? You came in late to many of them. Uh, how many core classes are there, like classes that are non-STEMI? Um, so for me, they just happen to be the non-STEMI ones because the STEMI ones were covered already. I don't know off the top of my head how many of these packed requirements there are. I think there's probably like nine or like ten or something. So it's like analyzing data, natural design, well, quantitative, no, I said that one. Um, like English writing, writing in your field. I can keep naming them, but I'll probably forget stuff. So they kind of run the gamut. Um, they sound more practical, they're not like literature and well, History. that's the thing. You can choose every class that you take at Northeastern will fall under at least one of those attributes. So, for example, um, for like a computer science major, it's not likely that you're going to be taking any like literature classes. But if you are really interested in literature, to fulfill your English writing class, maybe you'll take like literature in the 1800s or something. Um, so you can really get out of your field for those. Um, but they can be in any specific ones or any any specific you know like niche classes as you like, like guitar class or something, you know, but yeah, Eight. something like that. I don't know off the top of my head. You could definitely look that up online. I've done them. I just don't know. Don't know. But it's not like 15. Oh no, it's nothing yeah. crazy. And again, a lot of them are covered by your majors. Just you have to kind of get those ones that are a little more elusive for your, for your program. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Are you getting credit for the co-ops? So you are getting credit in the sense that you're completing your experiential learning requirement. You're not taking for it for any sort of class or in place of any classes. Um, it's not like you get a grade at the end and you get like four credits. Um, it's you just have a certain number of credits to graduate, right? Yeah, I think it's like 129, but um, I don't think that like the experiential learning itself is like you're taking this for this number of credits. But yeah. yeah, so you get to really like dive into it and just do it for it instead of trying to fulfill something else. Yeah. Did you say that you can do co-op from the and then being able to say you have five classrooms as well? Yeah, so I mean, well one, we have a lot of opportunities that are located in those other like cities and stuff. But also you can self-develop co-ops, which a decent number of people do, which is basically finding an opportunity that you want to do, bringing it to your co-op advisor and then having them bless it for a co-op. So I know somebody who like just chose to work on her um, her own business for six months. And I know other people who've like, oh the studio isn't affiliated with Northeastern in any way, but they just kind of did that position for those six months because their co-op's advisor said that they could. Yeah. All right. If you don't have any other questions, we are going to head to our next stop. We're going to be crossing